Hello again everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're taking a step outside of our comfort zone and looking at some unusual and unnerving stories about the wilderness. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at some intense moment from outdoorsmen and their scariest experiences in the wilderness. Don't forget to subscribe. I was out with an old friend who was hunting bull moose. He had parked at the top of a ridge line and down below us was a big bull section of land with a pond slash slough in the middle of it. I didn't have a moose tag but I did have my migratory bird permit and a shotgun, so I walked down to the water and hid in the reeds to try and call some ducks in. He had an electronic call going for the moose and I sat there taking the odd shot at some ducks flying low over the pond. Out of the blue, I hear a shot ring out and sure enough, a big bull moose had wandered over to investigate the cow calls. What I found out later was that bull was essentially breathing down my neck while I was hanging out in the reeds and he was very aware of my presence while I was verifiably ignorant of his. It was shocking just how quiet he was for such a massive animal. I don't know if any of you are aware of moose behavior or even their size, but a horny bull moose is nothing if not temperamental. I came a few feet from making the wrong move and pissing off a 1,000 plus pound animal with four of antlers that could have gored me to death in seconds. On the plus side, that moose was tasty as hell. While deer hunting along a creek with large table bluffs on one side, I picked up some fresh deer tracks and started stalking them. Not long after a set of mountain lion prints came down from one of the bluffs and were following the same deer I was following. I continued to follow them both curious to see how this going to play out. With the wind in my face I felt pretty safe neither animal would scent me so I continued down the trail a bit when suddenly both sets of tracks disappeared. Figuring it was me who made the error I lost the trail. I doubled back to the last spot I saw tracks in the mud. Only then did I find a second set of the same lion tracks on top of my original tracks. The damn lion somehow got the drop on me, and left alone or spooked the deer then quietly started preying on me. In an area covered by tall trees and overhanging bluffs and tall grasses from the creek I was prime bait for a lion I never ever saw. Scared the bejesus out of me. All I knew to do was take my gun off safety shoulder the gun and walk in pirouette circles back to the truck trying to spot it and never having my back to it for too long. Scariest thing is. I never ever saw the damn thing. And had I not lost the trail I never would have gone back to find out the freaking thing started hinting me. I'm not an outdoorsman, but me and my two friends were in a forest near Mount Hood. The forest felt creepy but we just thought that because it was our first time camping together that we were nervous. So we went on. A few days into our trip in this area we spotted what seemed like a man, take in mind the time was around 5 or 6 pm and we were literally in the middle of nowhere the nearest town was quite far away from us I think around 7 or 8 miles away so it couldn't have been a man not unless somehow we were being followed or something. That evening we were having a campfire drinking a couple beers and just having fun when a loud crash happened. It sounded like it was coming from a few hundred meters away. We dropped our shit and threw ourselves into a tent. Take in mind we had a one-man tent for all of us individually. So all of us in this small cramped tent just listening, with a small gap in the door for us to look out of. It was something like a horror story. That night none of us got to sleep because the sounds coming from outside the tent were horrific. We heard footsteps but not normal ones, ones like a large creature was walking around. After a few moments we heard what sounded like a car screech sound in the distance then a growl from the same creature. The creature nearest to us ran away. That night we stayed up the next day we made our way the 9 or 10 miles back. We all agreed that they were Sasquatch. Or some other mystery creature. I'm not a dude but I have gotten the crap scared out of me twice. One was many years ago when I was 15 hunting in Florida, at the end of the evening hunt. I'd been hearing wild hogs all around my tree stand grunting and just making a racket. I thought they had left and climbed down in a hurry, started for the trail to the truck. Then I heard several of them pick up my trail, I walked faster, they walked faster. I ran, they ran, snorting and grunting and all I had on me was my bow. When I finally got to the truck I yeeted myself into the bed and prepared for multiple pigs too, well, fly I guess into that pickup bed with me. They circled for a bit then lost interest and left. The second time was last September, hunting elk here in Wyoming. I'd been seeing the same mama moose and her calf, from a safe distance. I was a hunting along a trail at the bottom of two mountains, super dark dense woods on my left and a beautiful grove of aspens to the right. There was lots of fresh sign, but also signs of predators of varying freshness. I had my .45 and bow. I'd seen a black bear in the same area just a few days earlier, so I was being vigilant for danger I thought. I get almost to the head of the trail where I hope to find a nice bull getting a drink, hear some noise, 
stop then see the calf moose about a third of the way up the hill to my right. To the left was completely impenetrable. But I'm so close to the trailhead and mud wallows that I slink past the calf. I get closer to the top and realize I spent a lot of time doing all that and I had to head back right then if I wanted to walk out with daylight. I turned back, get close to where the moose was then hear a guttural roar that made every hair on my body stand on end. I expected to see a grizzly, but saw the mama moose bellow another loud roar and she's staring straight at me. I couldn't go into the dense dark woods even if I wanted to, I could attempt to run nearly vertically, straight up the mountain where she could still get at me or attempt to pass in front of her and the calf I was on. I wish there was more to the story from this point, I hot-footed past them, making a video the whole time juiced in case she charged me and I didn't make it out of there. Looking back on that video, it was sheer terror on my face, like I was on an episode of Ghost Adventures. I didn't know my eyes could get that big. Lesson learned, though. If you see a mama and baby moose semi-close and there's really just one way in and out, just turn back. Even if it is the last day of archery season. I have two of them. First, I was walking out into the woods about 5 am, pitch black outside, no moonlight whatsoever. I had my bow in my right hand and a small flashlight in the left to light my way. On the trail, I heard a rustle in the brush to my immediate right. I didn't turn my body towards it, just the flashlight. Whatever it was, it was small and had run off, but what frightened me the most was the shadow that was created from the flashlight shining on my bow. It was a dark and right at my feet and I jumped and screamed like a child. It took about 2 or 3 seconds for me to realize what I was screaming at and I'm glad I was alone because I would have been super embarrassed. Second. This one made me run out of the woods. Walking through the national forest in the evening, the sun was down, and it was getting dark, I took a wrong turn on the trail, and it took me a bit to notice. It wasn't a huge deal, the trails went to the same place, this one was just a mile longer. While on this trail I heard a woman scream in front of me. Like blood curdling loud. So where I was it wasn't uncommon during hunting season to have other hunters in the area, sometimes it got too crowded and you had to go somewhere else. So signs of human activity didn't surprise me. I stopped walking for a second and listened. I then heard another voice behind me also scream, this time from a man. I spun around and was trying to peer through the dense and dark trees if I could see anything but to no avail. I was confused at this point and was wondering if these people needed help or were just coincidentally frightened by an animal. But my heart was racing and it was now pitch black outside. What sent me running was after a minute or two of silence, I heard a snarl of some cat-like creature in the bushes nearby and I had had enough. I booked it out of there, bow in one hand, my concealed carry in the other. When I was 20 or so, me and this girl I was dating decided to go to a local pond to hang out and smoke some weed. The pond is in the middle of the woods and to get there you have to drive down miles of gravel road. When we got to the spot I noticed there was a beat up car already there. I didn't think anything about it, just some fishermen most likely. We get down to the pond and there is three rough looking guys, all drinking beer. They see the girl I am with and start catcalling her saying how pretty she is and start moving towards us pretty aggressively. At this point I am pretty concerned, three drunk idiots making advances on my girlfriend in the middle of the woods. Luckily I had my pistol with me, I took it out and as soon as they saw it they all stopped dead in their tracks. We hurry back up to the car, and right before I get in I go over to their car and rip a brake line out. I am so thankful that I had my pistol with me that day, who knows what could have happened was walking back in the dark from my hunting blind, headlamp on low red so as not to spook anything, made a turn and suddenly a glowing eldritch horror hovered across my path. It was a goddamn Mylar birthday balloon that had finished its journey by getting tangled in a tree branch just above eye level. Scared the crap out of me. Don't let your Mylar balloons go people, it's littering with extra steps. ETA, the actual scariest encounter was on a hike. Was hiking with two other guys and a dog. We were taking a break just off trail when a guy in jean shorts, always a red flag when not in Florida, comes walking down trail. Dog bounded out to say hello and next thing I know he's got a pistol in his hand aimed at the dog, which is directly in front of me. Owner starts yelling friendly friendly, I just rolled backwards off the creek bank and into the creek. Never stared down a barrel like that and don't care to again. This isn't exactly the wilderness, but here is my story. At my parents house growing up, our backyard was attached to a big wooded area. These woods had some trails that were extensive but poorly kept. Never once saw someone walking on them. Still, it was a convenient run spot where I jogged regularly. One morning 17 Yomi went on a run, jogged to the usual entry point. This particular morning I had run out of contact lenses, and glasses are annoying to work out in, so I went on the run with no visual aid, my vision is not the worst but pretty shit. As I'm doing my usual running route, 
vision impaired, but I knew it well, I suddenly hear what sounds like a creaking door. It sounded close by too, easily less than 40 feet away. Ha, huh, that's weird, I've never seen a house back here before. Keep running. Then I hear the creaking again. This time it sounds closer. WTF? Who even lives out here? Then a door slam. Then a loud bang, that sounded like something heavy dropping on a wood floor. I couldn't see much other than fuzzy trees and bushes, but it all sounded so close by. Every cell in my body was telling me to GTFO. Turned right around and sprinted the entire way home. Never ran back there again. Hunting deer about two miles from base camp. New area, but I had studied it decently. Took off at 2 p.m. after morning hunt to try a different spot. As I was hunkered down, waiting for dusk and the deer to start moving, I heard coyotes all around me, not great for deer. Waited it out and didn't hear them for an hour or two. 40 minutes of light to shoot and I am watching some deer but they never get close enough to shoot. Snow is whipping by this point and I go to my ox to have it ready cause I can't see shit and it's dark. Phone is dead, coyotes start barking and in the night when all is still it is loud even if they aren't close. I start going by landmarks that I can see in the moonlight with my hand over my eyes to block the snow looking back every time I heard a bark. Made it back but it wasn't the same way I went in and a lot more steps. Absolutely juiced to find the camp and drank beer like I was going to die that night. In a state park with a few nice lakes and some great trails and picnic sites and all that. People were kayaking and canoeing in the lakes, these people started getting chased out the lake by a swimming bull moose who was, I assume, asserting some sort of territorial dominance. The three I was hiking with were keen on avoiding any area near this thing and we had seen this big boy swimming back and forth in this lake a few minutes before. We were heading back to the parking lot when we saw, across the smaller lake, the bull moose had emerged and was chasing some idiot teenagers who were trying to get a close-up picture or something. If anyone doesn't know that this ridiculously huge herbivore can do some serious damage, YouTube moose attacks and you will find out. Those things are outrageously strong. So my buddy, who unbeknownst to me was packing, pulls out his 45 and I swear I thought he was going to try to shoot the moose from across the lake. So I yell to him what are you doing? You're just going to hit those people from this distance, and without thinking he aims the gun into the air and fires three shots and that moose freaked out and took off. Thought I was going to see a bunch of teenagers either get trampled or shot that day. Not full-time outdoors person, but go camping a lot. When I was younger my mother took my siblings and I to a camping spot she was recommended. My sister woke up to loud breathing above her head and saw something pushing up against the tent but couldn't tell what it was. She barely breathed thinking it was a bear and told my mother after it left but was still outside. My mother was too tired to check and they went back to sleep. We went outside that morning and saw tracks that weren't a bear's. My mom's not scared of bears since we only have black bears in the area but this made us pack up early since it was much more dangerous. An entire herd of wild plains bison roamed through our campsite at night and were near our tent. If you don't know about bison, they don't take kindly to humans being near them and have ended them in the part. If we had gone out, I would probably be able to see the invisible horse things from Harry Potter. About 10 years ago I had a dog that I brought hiking with me daily, we'd go out for a couple hours every day usually around mid-afternoon, but sometimes right before sundown, we had run into pretty much every animal native to the area during our hikes so my dog was well familiar with what was around him and I was familiar with his reactions to those animals. During one of our afternoon hikes we had just come around a bend in the trail where the trail meets up with an old stone wall from when the area was farmland forever ago, my dog stops dead in his tracks and everything about him is suddenly on edge, then come the most panic slash threatening sounds I've ever heard from him. At this point he's directly in front of me, facing whatever is setting him off and slowly backing up, pushing us into the base of a large tree, we ended up with our backs to the tree and him standing between my legs. I'm obviously panicking more than him at this point, I only had a hunting knife with me because my area doesn't have any large predators capable of taking down an adult man, let alone one with a dog, I'm looking everywhere trying to see whatever the hell is spooking him and there's just nothing. I've got no clue how long we stayed against the tree, but my first instinct was to get the hell out of there, so I grabbed him by the collar and led him back the way we came, while walking backwards facing the direction of whatever the hell was setting him off. Once we hit a certain distance I let him go and started flat out running back towards the road and he was glued to me the entire time, despite normally being a good 5 to 10 feet out in front of me when we'd run. I still don't 100% know for certain what animal set him off, but in recent years black bear sightings have become more common in my state, so I'm personally guessing that, also it was the start of summer when this took place, and I guess that's when they're most active. The second scariest encounter was probably when I came across some dudes illegally deer hunting, 
I'm always loud on purpose whenever I hike because I don't enjoy being surprised by startled animals, but these dudes spook the shit out of me. Some of the places I hike are technically private property, but nobody bothers to enforce it because it's in the middle of nowhere, but running into multiple people with guns in that situation is sketchy at best. They were fine, they kept asking if I was friends with Chuck or whoever so I nodded and then told them I gotta go and noped out of there. I didn't go anywhere near that area again for the rest of the season lol. When I was in grade school I went camping with two other friends and their parents. We were camping up in the Sawtooth Mountains in Stanley, Idaho. One of the days we all went hiking up one of the main trails. My friends and I got way up past the adults and out of their sight. As three dumb grade school boys would do we decided to explore a little off trail. When we turned to go back up the hill back to the trail we spotted a mountain lion just staring us down. We ended up losing our shit and running as fast as we could the opposite way of the trail, probably not the smartest thing to do when encountering an animal like that, but we were terrified. After running who knows how far even crossing a small creek waist deep with patches of snow on the ground. We felt somewhat safe enough away from the mountain lion but realized we were now lost with zero idea what way the trail was. After freaking out again as three grade schoolers in the middle of the harsh wilderness of Idaho, we began walking. Luckily we got back to the trail and found our parents. They were mad as hell at us. It had been a couple hours and they already had other hikers trying to find us. We were still shaking from the cold and fear from seeing that. We slept in the pathfinder the last couple days up there. Looking back I realize how close we were to possibly losing our lives. If it weren't the mountain lion, lost in that wilderness could have been it for us. Did my first sunrise hike a few weeks ago. Was scared shitless but mostly about getting lost because I didn't know the trail. Once we got to the trailhead and realized how dark it was we also started thinking about animals but figured we knew what to do if we came across anything. Got about three quarters of the way up, could kinda see the lights from the town nearby. Buddy looked over the side and saw two lights and said wait, do you see that? I did and was 100% convinced we were way up above the parking lot, someone else was pulling up for a near sunrise hike. Then they blinked. And moved super quickly to the right. Turned out it was the reflection of our headlamps in something's eyes. Didn't know what it was but started getting big and loud, waving sticks at the bushes in front of us. Eyes disappeared for a second and our headlamps were focused on the area. We saw what looked like the huge backside of a cat. 90% positive it was a cougar. Eyes appeared again but further away. Then they were gone again. We thought we were gonna die lol luckily we came up on a rock face and had a really clear field of vision pretty much all the way to the top. We waited up there for about an hour after sunrise until we saw another person because we were scared shitless lamau. Fun times, the best first and last sunrise hike a guy could ask for. I don't go out much, but I remember there was one time I was out camping with my parents. I hated staying in one spot for too long, so I told them I was going to explore and just walked into the woods. No idea where I was going to go, but I thought it'd be fun. About 10 minutes in, I get the feeling I'm being watched. I get paranoid very easily, so I figured it was just that, and tried my best to ignore it. Another 10 minutes goes by and I hear the most demonic sound I have ever heard, it was screaming slash howling, but sounded like a human and some animal combined. It was fucking terrifying, so I turned and ran back to the camp. Parents said they never heard anything and that I was being paranoid. I hid in the tent for the rest of the night and didn't at all sleep. I saw a video on here a couple months ago of someone in the woods hearing an almost exactly similar scream, a bunch of comments said it was probably a deer afflicted with some disease. I don't care what it was, though. That shit was horrifying and I still have nightmares about it. Never have I been terrified per se, but on a solo backcountry hunt, 17 miles from the trailhead, I had my only encounter with a lion. I was glassing on the last day of my hunt and came up on a lion walking the tree line and if it had stayed on course it was likely to come to me. My first thought. It might bump a buck my way, given that I was losing shooting light my second thought was and I will be dressing out that buck with a headlamp to pack back to camp in the dark. After some internal debate I packed back to my camp where the outfitter and my horse was waiting unexpectedly, pack out was to next morning. We made our meal for the night and I told him about the cat and how I tapped out, he agreed it was for the best. That night both our mounts and the mules were skittish and we slept poorly. On the ride out we ran into two other hunters who told us that a cat came through their camp the night before. I've seen plenty of older sign in my time but this was the one and only time I've been truly on edge knowing I need to have my head on a swivel because there was no doubt that a lion was near. First one, I must have been 7 or 8 years old, living in western Massachusetts's. Our backyard basically ended in a forest, so I was sledding and running around in the woods with a few friends in the dead of winter on a snow day. 
I was decently far into the woods, by myself when the hairs on the back of my neck instantly went up and I had an overwhelming feeling of being watched slash dread. I looked around and walking about 100 to 200 feet from me was what looked like a wolf on two legs with horns or antlers, and it had red eyes. I remember it looking right at me and me being frozen in fear. Thankfully it just kept walking and didn't stop slash approach me. Years and years later when I was in my late 20s I saw an artist's depiction of a Wendigo and it was spot on with what I saw, still creeps me out thinking about it. Second one, this was about two years ago when I was working in remote Alaska doing geologic exploration at a prospect way out in the mountains. I was laying out a few kilometers of locating wire, think typical wire you'd run through a house, for a geophysics survey. Anyways, the brush was super thick, about 12 feet tall, woody and dense, so you can barely walk through it, and can't see more than 5 feet through it. I'm holding a wire in my hand about to connect it to some equipment, and it gets ripped out of my hand at about 30 miles per hour, enough force to knock me over. Right after that I smell the wet dog smell that a bear gives off when it's close. I'm freaking out because I'm alone, I see the brush start moving right in front of me and hear branches breaking and as I'm scrambling for my gun the biggest caribou I've ever seen pokes its head through the brush with a mess of wire stuck in its antlers. It gives me a quick look and then darts off into the brush again. Thought I was about to die, that was the worst one. I camped a lot growing up. I was in a sort of Boy Scouts type group growing up. When we got a little older like high school age we would do these tests or competitions where they would give us coordinates and send us off in twos in the middle of the night and we had to go hiking to look for certain spots where we would pick up an object and move along until we collected all of them and got back to camp. Of course there were adults spotting us and making sure we didn't die but we didn't know about that. One of them thought it would be funny to make a mountain lion noise and scared the living shit out of me. He came out and was laughing and said we were on the right path. We keep going and his asshole does the noise again but he's doing it to another pair of kids that were off on the distance. Me and my buddy decided to go around where he was at and scare the shit out of him. So we go towards where we last heard the sound, mind you, it's pitch black, we turned out flashlights off to surprise dude. And as we're sneaking close we hear the most god awful, what sounded like a woman being murdered sound so close to us and realized we had been going towards an actual mountain lion we never saw it but that sounds will stay scarred in my head forever. We ran as fast as we could out of there, my buddy pissed himself somewhere along the way. They had to call off the whole thing after that. I couldn't sleep for like a week cause of that sound. The mountain lion must have been stalking us or something cause it couldn't have been more than 5 feet from us. Not many people believe me but, I had an encounter with a wendigo in the main woods while I was hunting. This happened when I was hunting several years ago. It was November of either 2015 or 2016. I went out hunting with my grandfather in a patch of woods not incredibly far from his house. I met him on the road by where we usually parked to go in. We loaded up, figured out a plan for where to post and what we'd do and set off into the woods. For those that like visualizing the best they can, this was a fairly dense section of woods bordered on two sides by roads. The hill I usually posted on, sat and waited for deer, was met by a large swamp on the bottom. I got to my spot and my grandfather went deeper into the woods. It had already snowed that month so the ground was covered with snow and more snow was due to fall that due but we figured we'd be out before it started. After being set up for a few hours the woods went dead silent. This usually only happens when a predator is around, I perked up and started looking around just to make sure I wasn't the target. I started hearing a crunching and squishing sound from down the hill from me. As I stood up and looked I saw a 7-8 to eight foot tall emaciated creature ripping something apart and eating it. The creature and the ground around it were covered in blood which contrasted with fresh snow. At this point I audibly said what the fuck and it cocked its head and began to turn and look at me. Terrified I raised up my rifle and fired three rounds at the creature. It screamed the loudest sound I've ever heard in my life and dropped its meal and took off towards the swamp. I'm sure I hit it at least once but seemingly I only pissed it off. I immediately called my grandfather on his cell and before I could even say anything he said stay where you are I'm coming to you, we're leaving. Now. My grandfather was and still is an avid hunter and outdoorsman. He resembles a mountain man. Hearing that in his voice put me on an even higher alert because there was no risk of me misinterpreting what I had seen. He reached me pretty quickly and we hauled ass out of the woods. When we got to the vehicles we heard one last distant scream and that was it. He never acknowledged what we had both heard and I had seen and nowadays he just says he was cold and was tired of being out there that day. I have never seen anything even remotely close to that before or since. I know the story sounds crazy and if I hadn't been there I wouldn't believe it either. If anyone has any questions I'd be happy to answer it. I still hunt, I just make sure I'm out of the woods well before sundown now. The Wendigo was roughly 7 to 8 feet tall. 
emaciated with a distended belly, pale white skin that was both stretched tight and saggy, with long claw-like fingers and deep eye sockets with pure black eyes. Not an outdoorsman, but I did have a pretty terrifying encounter in the woods. So I lived in a tiny little town way out in the sticks. Where I lived was about five miles down a long road through nothing but woods on both sides. Pitch black. No street lights. Very few houses. Well my boyfriend at the time lived on the main road right at the end where my road turned off the main road. So one night I was at my boyfriend's house but I had to get home. So he lets me use his bike and a flashlight and I take off down my road. About halfway down the road I hear something in the brush next to the road. I tried to shine the flashlight around to see what it was but it was still hidden so I kept on riding. Then all at once it burst out of the trees and started chasing me down the road. I could hear its feet as it ran. I turned around while pedaling and got a glimpse of it and it was a freaking bear. It chased me for a short ways then stopped and turned around and went back to where it came out of the woods from. I think maybe it had cubs and was just trying to chase me off. But at like 3 am in the pitch black on a bicycle it was a scary experience. I made it back home but I never did ride a bike through there at night anymore. I made sure to get rides from then on. The woods can be scary at night especially when you're not used to them. Avid rock climber here. Five or so years ago some friends and I met up with our other friends outside of Moab for a weekend of rock climbing and rappelling. We had a favorite campsite that was in the middle of nowhere. Like drive towards Canyonlands Park and turn at the post with the can on it and drive a memorized path, type of nowhere. Our second night coming back to our spot we found a group of five to six people in our campground, which was totally fine, no reservations for the place, we were just surprised to run into a group there as it was so out of the way, and also did I forget to mention. Right on the edge of a 300 foot cliff that made for incredible views, but we also campused the area carefully before setting up. Anyways, five to six people in our spot, which we had left one tent and some gear at. Two of them were naked, another woman had her top off. They were blasting music next to a large fire, and informed us they were all tripping on substances. They initially invited us to join, but after an exhausting day we just asked for our gear to go sleep in our cars. One of our friends was annoyed and made a comment about the dinosaur print on one of the guy's underwear. I understand these people wanted a safe space to trip and our friend should have been more understanding, and was in the wrong. However this turned into a quick escalation in our tripping acquaintances, whom suddenly wanted us gone. One suggested throwing us off the cliff, but another observed that our groups were similar in size and they likely wouldn't be able to overpower us. One friend de-escalated the two most agitated while myself and another of our group grabbed our shit and shoved it into our cars rapidly. We then wished them well, and full ran to our cars as soon as we were out of view. And that's how my friend group was almost offed via cliff toss by a group of naked strangers. We slept in our cars that night, it was a fun weekend though. The time when I was truly terrified, to an unreal degree, happened in Washington State at Mount Rainier National Park. I usually spend my spare time honing my bushcraft survival skills, from tracking to fire making. I am very accustomed to the outdoors and thrive in woodland environments. In England, the only threat at night time in the local woods would be other people, so I'm not used to the wild animals of America. I was leading a group of teenagers through Mount Rainier with another co-lead. We arrived at a barren camp, very exposed with a few trees for cover. A few other random hikers were camping nearby, and word got out that bears had been sighted in the valley surrounding us. I saw a mother and her cubs wandering in the hills, which was a fantastic moment, as I had never seen a bear before. I settled down for the night on the edge of the camp. The kids were asleep, and I was nestled in my bivy bag. For those who don't know what a bivy bag is, it's a sleeping bag shaped cover that goes over your sleeping bag. If it's high spec enough, it essentially functions as a mini tent. This zips me in completely, and I can't sit up. I'm glued to the ground. Bang. I was jolted awake by what honestly sounded like a freight train smashing into a house. My eyes shot open, my heart leapt in my chest. I grabbed my phone next to my head. It was 040. Lying there, I was terrified to the core. Then, to my horror, I began to hear something creeping up behind me. Sticks cracked occasionally, and I was genuinely scared for my life. To make matters worse, I urgently needed to pee and couldn't hold it in any longer. Yes, I essentially wet myself, I called out hey bear as I'd heard that's what you should do, but received no response. I called out again, hey bear, and tried to make some loud, manly sounding coughs in an attempt to scare the bear off. After a few minutes of this, I decided that wetting myself was worse than potentially dying. I clambered out of my bivy bag, and with what could only be described as the agility of a large man trying to act out a walking dead character, 
I attempted to secure the camp with my phone torch, a head torch, and a small knife. I checked on the kids, all asleep. I checked on my co-worker, also asleep. Then, to my horror and embarrassment, I spotted a deer wandering around the camp. In what was undoubtedly the scariest experience of my life, I ended up feeling like an idiot afterwards. I think what happened is the deer walked into the camp and tripped over a log, laughing my ass off, which woke me up. The crunching of sticks I thought I heard was actually the sound of my heartbeat causing my beard to rub against my sleeping bag liner, which created the illusion of something approaching. Once, getting lost in the woods and seeing a new markings for a trail that was not anywhere on the official map. We thought we were potentially following a serial killer's trap to our deaths. Second, hiking with my mid-late 60s parents who cannot run well slash fast and hearing a fast approaching rattlesnake going straight for my father. I didn't know what to do, so I stood in between the bush and my father, sacrificing myself so he could pass unharmed. Thankfully, nothing happened but I'll never forget the increasingly loud rattling and not knowing when it'd emerge and bite me. Third, I was at camp and we were on a group hiking day at a well-traveled hiking site. My camp grade split up into two smaller groups and for some reason I had a strong urge to walk with the group my sister was in instead of either of the two groups I was supposed to be in. I completed my hike with my sister's group and returned to the meeting point without anything particularly remarkable happening. Moments after, both of the groups composed of my camp grade came running out of the forest screaming, crying, and a few girls were being dragged slash carried out. Within 20 minutes there were ambulances carting people away and a local news truck on the scene. Apparently, those two groups had stumbled upon two hornets' nests that dropped right on top of them, causing hundreds of hornets to swarm them and relentlessly sting them. A few of the girls were allergic and almost died. Fourth, I was with my family on a retreat in Pennsylvania. The retreat had a cool water slide set up in the middle of the forest, so my siblings and I decided to go check it out. It was about a 20-minute walk or so, but the potential payoff of riding a water slide was worth it. When we finally arrived, I discovered that I had gotten my period. I was young so I was embarrassed of the thought of getting in the water and having it change to a red color. I knew that period stopped in water, but the potential risk was too great. I asked my sisters to walk back to the cabins with me, but they refused. I ended up going alone, with my head hanging and a chlorine-soaked towel around my shoulders. This was a huge mistake because within minutes I was getting swarmed by wasps. I threw the towel off me and took off in an all-out sprint, not even sure of where I was going. The trail we had used was unmarked so I did everything by memory. Miraculously I ended up back at the cabins but so many things could have gone wrong. Did I mention that I was also running barefoot because my flip-flops broke apart at the about 5 minutes after I started running? Probably the worst experience ever. We got caught on an a lightning storm on Tabletop Mountain in NC. It was so bad and we were so exposed that we crawled into this rock opening slash cave to get cover. This was probably a terrible idea but it's what we did. It was a tight fit, four of use in this cave, you couldn't even sit upright, we were on all fours or on our bellies trying to get backpacks under ourselves. Well, lightning kept hitting the mountain and we kept getting shocked to shit. When it happened, it felt like your head was getting slammed into the mountain or getting punched by the mountain. Scary as fuck, I was about 18. This was in the late 80s, cell phones weren't a thing. We hiked out as soon as we could and on the way down there was a scout troop doing CPR. One of the kids got hit, I ran down the mountain trail to the parking lot, it was a couple miles, I was going on pure adrenaline to get down there to get help. We never did find out about the kid, I hope he made it. That was an all-around frightening adventure. I practically live in the woods. Most animal encounters are pretty mild, but there has only been a handful of encounters that have made me reconsider my choice of surroundings. I've nearly hit deer while turning into my driveway, been trapped in my car by coyotes, and have had to chase off a druggie or two, but there was this one time that sticks with me to this day. I was watching TV late one night when I heard what sounded like someone in heavy boots stomping around on my front porch. I grabbed something for self-defense, flipped on a light, and went out to find some. Creature. I'm not exactly sure what it was because I didn't get a good look. All I know is that it was big and hairy. And fast. Almost instantly as soon as I saw it, it leapt off my porch and took off into the woods. I thought it might be a black bear, but they don't normally live in my area, so I called wildlife resources to check it out. We found some tracks, but they didn't look anything like a bear's, more like a big cat or dog. The wildlife officer said the tracks looked similar to a mountain lion's, but they were, as he described, oversized and sunk too far into the ground, like a much heavier animal made them. The claw marks on my porch didn't match anything that he'd ever seen either, so he was clueless. I was close enough to get a general size, and it was about the size of a cow. Other than that, 
I didn't get a real good look as right as I saw it move, I was halfway back inside the house. I don't know what the hell it was, but if I ever see it again, I'll probably just pack my things and leave. Fortunately, that was about 12 years ago. I haven't seen it since and I never want to. In high school, I was camping in the woods with two of my cousins and the campsite was near a river. It had been raining quite a bit so the water was already pretty high. It started raining right before we went to sleep. All three of us woke up around midnight and there was water in the tent. I opened the door and the river was overflowing and flooding the wooded area where we were camped. We packed up the bare minimum and started wading through the knee-deep water towards the car which was about half a mile away. The closer we got to the car the deeper the water was getting. At one point it was up to our neck. We turned around and went back to the area where the water was up to our knees. I had kept my phone out of the water and I happened to have service at the spot where we were standing. I called my dad and he drove about an hour to get to the area where we were camped. He also called 911 so a bunch of officers from the sheriff's department showed up, swam out to us with some flotation devices and we swam back with them. Could have ended a lot worse. In 2007 I moved from the US East Coast to Arizona, and was looking forward to making a big change and experiencing the new surroundings. Took a job working outdoors at sites on a wildlife refuge. Most sites were one to two hours of driving on dirt roads from our main shop not inhabited, no cell service, and the only emergency lifeline was the truck's radio. But you were still very isolated and far from emergency services. On my first day, I was briefed about the local wildlife. Scorpions, snakes, tarantulas, coyotes, deer, bobcat, and mountain lions. Encountered everything on the list in my first few months, except for a mountain lion. Then one night shift, I'm outside sitting in my camping chair after I finished my first set of tasks. Nice cool night, and it was a new moon. The benefit, being away from any light pollution, I've never seen so many stars in my life. All of a sudden around 2 AM, I start hearing rustling sounds in the brush. It gradually gets louder, then I hear breathing. Heavier and louder, and finally some snarling snorty noises. At this point, I'm frozen in fear. It's so dark I can't tell what's stalking me, and I start to panic. I hit my flashlight. I'm resigned to at least go out swinging if this is it. Finally, it steps through the brush about 10 feet away from me. A wild fucking donkey. It just stared at me nonchalantly and continued on its merry way trampling through the bushes and cacti without a care in the world. Unbeknownst to me, there's wild donkeys in the Sonoran Desert. Whenever they abandon the old mines, they let the donkeys go. Some of them learned to survive in the desert, and have become permanent residents. It most likely smelled my dinner in the truck and got a little curious. Co-workers had a nice laugh at my expense, as most were locals and knew about them for a long time. And that was my last encounter with a donkey. I was fishing in my kayak. I was in a creek in a tidal part of the James River in Virginia. I have a crate that sits behind my seat that has four rod holders built in. One of my rods had a frog tied on, which for those who are not anglers, is a top water bait that is designed to look like a frog in the water, not an actual live frog. My frog rod happened to be in the holder on one of the back corners, with the frog actually resting on the top of the crate. I was using a rod and trying to put it back to switch to another rod but I couldn't find the open rod holder while I wasn't looking, so I turned to look. When I turned I saw something out of my periphery. When I turned the other way, I saw what looked like a three and a half foot cottonmouth had crawled up onto my kayak from the water and was stalking the frog. Fortunately I was able to grab my paddle and knock it back into the water and got the fuck out of that creek. I was hiking in Spain doing the Camino de Santiago pilgrim route. One day I joined two other pilgrims and we decided that that day we wouldn't go to a hostel and that we would sleep outside. We walked till late evening so when we arrived to the spot we wanted to camp but it was already completely dark there. It was kind of a resting spot, on one side there was a small and straight road, on the other side there was the edge of the forest, the whole resting spot was like 100 meters long with a few tables, benches and stuff like that while the pilgrim route was passing through it. As we were setting up our mattresses and sleeping bags on the ground, a car arrived at the opposite end of the sleeping spot. Lights on, a few people exited the car and starting talking some stuff out of the trunk. We thought that they were campers so that we started discussing whether we should stay at the spot and share the place with them or continue to another suitable one. In the matter of seconds, literally seconds, not minutes, without talking or interacting with us in any way, Although they must have seen us because of our headlights, the group put on weird dark robes and rushed 50 meters straight into the woods. Before we were able to comprehend what the matter was they made a circle, set up a fire and started to play some very weird instruments and kind of occult music which sounded extremely scary, can't really describe it well. All this happened in less than a minute, I can't comprehend how. 
At that moment the decision was clear, we rushed our ice to get the F out of that place. It wasn't until like 2 kilometers when we stopped hearing the music play and we were talking about it and almost sheeing our pants throughout the whole rest of a night while sleeping at another spot not that far away. It was a crazy experience, I will never forget it. I was around 13 and very experienced by then in the woods and as a hunter. My family dropped me off on the opposite portion of the hunting land we were leasing in South Georgia USA. At over 1000 acres of timber they could not even hear me shoot where most people were hunting. I was dropped off in the darkness over an hour before sunrise so that I could hike the mile to the deer stand. As I stood in the darkness to allow my eyes to adjust I could hear a pack of feral dogs yipping and howling as if they were chasing a deer. I was making my way quickly down my trail and noticed that the dogs were getting closer. I thought to myself that if I felt they were closing in on me that I would get up an old rotten stand midway to where I hunted. If they were a deer they would run past my position and if not they would scatter trying to find my trail. The sounds of the pack intensified and it sounded like they were at the road where I was dropped. I hurried to the midpoint and could tell they had picked up their pace. I scurried up the makeshift ladder and got into the stand with my heart pounding. Then the most chilling thing occurred, they fell silent. I stood in that stand with my heart pounding straining to listen for their approach. Suddenly they were there bursting from brush around the trail. In total I would say there were over a dozen dogs of various breeds that had gone feral. No collars on any of them. They stopped and fanned out sniffing once my trail was broken. I slowly turned and shifted my stance to get into a firing position. Since these dogs were clearly hunting me they were a hazard to anyone in the woods. I started to raise my rifle when a very large chow chow looked up and started growling. The pack all started barking as the chow snarled and kicked dirt around it. This made it clear who was going to go first. My first show was true and killed the chow instantly. I immediately went to work to take out as many as I could. The pack immediately ran the opposite direction and headed to even heavier brush and young pine trees. They melted into the forest rapidly and as I fired many shots were blocked by small trees. I was only able to take a few more of the pack out but I think I made my point as we did not encounter any further sign of them on the property. It was probably 15 minutes before I stopped shaking from the encounter. After I calmed down enough to climb down I was still stunned with processing what had just happened. I continued onto my deer stand and was able to harvest a doe and met my family at the road at my pickup time. Okay this story still gives me chills when I think about it. I know I took LSD but I swear this was no illusion or at least it did not feel like or seem like it, I've done LSD, shrooms, DMT plenty of times. Me and my ex-wife were chilling in my old apartment and Oz it starts inside then goes outside. We wanted a good night and I had prepared Jack Daniels, weed, and one tab each of LSD. We drop the tabs at the house and smoke a bit. We then proceed to take a walk in the park nearby. We proceed to chill there for 3 hours, after that we are feeling pretty sober again. We discussed and thought it would be a great idea to go to the river north of Mesa at about 2 to 3 in the morning. We take off and once we arrive we find a parking area next to the river. Once we pull in we see two other cars parked but no people. Kind of weird, but we thought maybe they were camping somewhere, it's legit middle of the desert. We get out of the car grab our bag of weed and jack, then proceed to walk towards the river. As we were walking a man carrying a lunchbox walks right past, doesn't look at us, and doesn't respond to our hello. He legit just walks off into the desert into the darkness. We thought it was weird but whatever. So there we are at about 3 in the morning just chilling at the river smoking away. Then I hear a baby crying and splashing noises, mind you this is probably 5 to 6 hours after dropping, I say nothing at first thinking I'm still maybe tripping. The hairs on my skin raise up as I hear the sound again, and then my ex turns to me and says you hear that too right? Fuck. My stomach sinks that very moment, and the crying, sounds exactly like baby, not a mountain lion slash bobcat, gets louder and the splashing is louder. So I spring into action, thinking it's a child, and escort my ex to the car, give her the keys, and lock the door. I pull out my side arm, gun is at the ready, not pointed, finger off trigger of course, in case it's someone, the strange man who is harming a child. I shine a flashlight and proceed to close in on the noise, as it has not stopped making noise. My heart is racing, but I move forward calling out is anybody there? And the noise would stop every time I called out, but then start again, baby crying, and splashing in water. As soon as my flashlight lights gets close to lighting up the area that's making a noise. I see a dark figure, probably 5 feet or under, but a thicker build, hunched over the river, and fucking staring at me. Noise stops, Figure jumps in water, loud audible splashing, and then starts racing towards me down the river. I fucking split, regroup with the X, and get out of dodge. I highly doubt there was a child at all, 
At least I hope so, but that fucking terrified me. I'm 100% that was no hallucination but I did take LSD. Anyways, yeah, that's my scary story. Not a regular outdoors person by any stretch but I was invited to a wedding many years ago in Maine. The bride's father had a pretty sizable farm and he took a few of us around it that wanted to kill some time and see the operation. We were all walking somewhat together and came to a pretty big wooded section of the farm with old logging roads in several different directions. Me and one other guy had stopped to admire a few of the huge trees around when we heard the cracking of brush and limbs behind us. It was spring and everything had greened up making it tougher to see much in the thick growth. My mind went straight to thinking it might be a bear. I stepped behind the closest tree near me and hid. As it got closer I was able to just make out a huge pair of moose antlers as it slowly made its way towards me in the logging road. I never could have imagined how immensely massive a moose can grow too. My heart was in my throat as it walked no more than 15 feet from me. I could hear my own heartbeat in my ears like a jackhammer, my mouth dry as a bone, knees shaking. I was frozen with fear. It just wandered past me without even noticing me it seemed. It came close enough that I could smell it walking by. I had to take a seat on an old stump for quite a bit before trying to go back. I once had a pack of wolves come into my camp and wake me up. I'll try to keep this short as possible. I was tenting it on a little peninsula on a medium-sized lake in Ontario. Spent a few nights there, day tripping and such. Caught my first pike, I was howling to the wolves for the first two nights there. On the morning of night three, I was woken at about 5.30 am, skies were just getting grey, to the sound of wolves calling in the distance. Thought it was just a feverish dream and went back to sleep. Not half hour later, they woke me up again, and their calls kept getting closer. I heard them surround the peninsula. They roll called, then went dead quiet. Maybe 10 seconds later, what felt like minutes, I heard soft footsteps in the grass around my tent, and the sniffing of a little snout, less than a foot from my head. I grew up with dogs, I know that sound well. Panic set in, I screamed, blew my Fox 40 as loud as I could, and jumped out of my tent in my birthday suit with my bear spray in hand. Not sure what my adrenaline infused plan was, but I wasn't dying laying down, not that it would have happened, but I'd rather take the first move. I heard them all go nuts but they went away pretty quick. Later that morning I investigated and saw their tracks and some fresh moose tracks so I assumed that was their mission, and my deet soaked sweaty musk was a mere side quest. Since then, I have not had as intense of an adrenaline rush. I've had lots of close encounters with bears, and nothing more intense than one of them snapping their jaws at me, so this was by far the scariest. Thought I was a minute away from meeting Liam Neeson on the other side. Also, my friends have not let me live that guttural, girly, truly primal scream for your life scream. My brother and I were making the mile-long hike to our deer stands at about 5 am so it was pitch black. It was late fall so peak rutting season for deer and the bucks in the area were filled with testosterone and aggression, by far the most exciting time of year to hunt. We liked to let our eyes adjust to the dark for 20 or so minutes before beginning the hike so that we wouldn't have to use flashlights in an attempt to not alert any deer to our presence in the area. The route we took included walking along some deer trails as the area was pretty thick with vegetation and otherwise would be very difficult slash loud to traverse. Around 12 minutes into our transit we heard this extremely loud crashing about 100 yards up the ridge we were walking on. We both froze to listen to the commotion and it was pretty clear that it was two large bucks fighting each other up the ridge. Antlers clashing, branches breaking, vegetation being mowed over, the whole nine yards. The bucks must have heard us shuffling around on the trail when we started to move again because the sounds of fighting stopped. We then heard the unmistakable sound of heavy hooves pounding into the ground and running, but the sound was getting louder and louder. I realized that the buck was on the same trail we were walking on and he was charging towards us. The trail made a 90 degrees turn about 20 feet ahead of us and I heard the buck quickly closing the distance. I knew he was on track to make the turn and be facing us within seconds. As soon as the sound reached the turn in front of us I was met with this huge mass bounding towards me with its head down. I grabbed my bow and held it in front of me and without thinking just screamed as loud as I could hey. 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 The buck immediately veered away from us and quickly ran away. I figure he must have thought we were deer since we were walking on the same deer trail he was on and, being filled with the aggression from the fight, was charging us to run us out of his territory. I had never heard of people getting charged by deer before and if it didn't happen to me personally, would probably have a hard time believing a story like this could happen. Definitely needed a new pair of underwear after that experience. I thought it was kinda cool tbh, but I saw a sign about cannibals and how trespassers would be killed and tortured, and there were skulls of animals nearby one of which was in a tree. 
but that just seemed like an edgy guy who didn't want folks to trespass lol. My dad however has been a big outdoorsman his whole life, and he once found skinned dogs hanging up in the woods. He and his dad were also out in the woods once and there was like a shack with dogs fenced in, and they heard them barking and then what he described as sounding like a caricature Bigfoot sound, like a deep roar that's human slash ape-like, and then the dogs stopped shortly after, and they got TF out of there. Would have been around 30 or so years ago in Michigan. He always wished he recorded his dad's account of it too. He hadn't ever heard of any Bigfoot or anything but it made him curious about that stuff for life, though he's a fairly skeptical guy. I haven't talked to him specifically about what all he's experienced but I probably will now. The skin dog thing for example I just overheard. Ironically my closest encounter with a bear happened in my own city when one somehow got over here and onto my street lol. Thought I was going crazy and convinced myself the monster sound I heard was from a TV or I just imagined it, then found out a bear got here, and there's not really any bears close by lol. Also in a tent there was a large dog that I woke up at 3am to pushing into tent and heard it breathing and knocking into stuff next to me. Most of these are animal encounters and I've had a few of these, moose, wolf, but the most scared I've been was when I was simply lost. I was in the army, doing training, ranger school, if you want to google, and we had set up our camp for the night and started the watch. Watch means that one person has to be awake and alert for whatever. This night, we had a hurricane downgraded to tropical storm coming through. Pitch black, pouring rain, wind whipping branches back and forth. Everyone was exhausted from the training, including me. On my watch, I walked around the perimeter like I was supposed to, but I wasn't sure where everyone had set up because we stopped after dark. Somehow I wandered outside the perimeter and no one noticed because everyone, instructors included, were wrapped up in their rain gear and asleep. Rain and leaves were spraying in my eyes, trees swaying, and in my exhaustion I could not get my bearings to find my way back. I was petrified of waking up an instructor and beginning to stumble and collapse. It was mixture of shame at screwing up something as simple as literally just staying awake and fear of getting screamed at for it. I decided to start trying to walking in a spiral to try to find the group and it somehow worked. I literally tripped over a sleeping student and was back in the camp. I just woke up whoever I tripped over and told them it was their turn for watch before laying down and fading out for a couple of hours. I have two. One time I was hiking in northern Maine. I decided to make a day trip up to a mountain that could only be accessed by a logging road and was sparsely trafficked. I'd never done it before but a friend had told me about it and said it was the perfect place to be alone, something I was looking for at that time. The hike up was great. Didn't see another soul. The bird were chirping, deer were frolicking, and I even got to see a porcupine in its den that was a short ways off the trail. I got to the top and enjoyed a nice picnic, deciding to take my time as I really had nowhere to be. After a little bit I noticed something was feeling off though. I couldn't quite place it so I decided to pack up and start hiking back down. On my way down I couldn't shake that uneasy feeling and am not one to dismiss my natural instincts. I stopped to try to place what was making me feel this way when I noticed the forest had gone silent. There wasn't a deer bleeding let alone a chipmunk chittering. Realizing that something was actually wrong I took out my bear spray and continued at a quickened pace. For the next 40 minutes I continued to walk while making large whooping noises and periodically turning behind me to ensure nothing was sneaking up from behind. While there are no documented mountain lions in Maine I just knew that I was on that mountain with some large predator and it was looking at me. Thankfully as I neared the beginning of the trail two dogs came running up, shortly followed by a man apologizing saying he should have had them on leash. As soon as they came into sight the forest returned to life and I made sure to tell him about what had just happened to me. He thanked me and said he always had bear spray on him as his uncle swears he's seen big cats in the area. The second thing was I was hiking a pretty popular mountain in my area. It sits roughly 10 minutes from the heart of a shopping area and a lot of people use the campground area for b-days, picnics, etc. There's a long trail that loops around the entire mountain and an offshoot from that on the backside that takes you to the mountain peak. Well most people use the incredibly short. 5 mile hike straight up the front of the mountain I always like to do this larger loop. One day I was hiking this loop on the way back down the mountain. Besides the offshoot that takes you up the mountain there are also a series of offshoots that act as shortcuts to help bypass the longer and more boring parts of the loop trail. As I was at around the halfway point, from one of these offshoots stepped a man in a full suit. I'm talking jacket, dress shoes, the whole nine yards. Immediately I got the feeling that I shouldn't look at this man for too long. Not for any real supernatural reason but more this just felt so out of place I didn't want to get involved in whatever this man was doing. Keeping my head down I quickly passed him by but did check behind me to make sure he had continued on his way. As I continued down the trail, 
admittedly a little weirded out I couldn't help but jump a little when as I came up on the next offshoot in the opposite direction that the man had just gone the same man in the same suit stepped out and onto the loop trail. I immediately realized how wrong this was but rationalized that it must just be a duo that were hiking together. Without breaking stride in hopes not to bring my attention to this man now approaching me I quickly put my head down and started to jog and didn't stop for the next mile on the way back to my car. I've rationalized that experience in my mind now but that still to this day is the most real paranormal experience I've ever had. Some soft bushwhacking through Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. It was winter, otherwise known as wet season because literally everything is soaked even on sunny days. Went to a hill to see a tree and look at the land. It looked like a plot that was marked for some restoration. When I walked back down to get on the trail, I got too close to a redwood. Yes, this is a thing. I took a step and my leg went three feet straight down into an underground drainage spring. Redwoods often have large surface roots. They don't dig down deep, but they spread far from the base. Small drainages from creeks or tributaries can flow underneath and around these roots. My foot hit a soft spot in between the roots and collapsed the ground underneath. I really didn't think that something like walking could wake me up that hard. Going from the serene stillness of a redwood forest to free fall, even for a split second I think I peed a little. Just don't go wandering on uncertain ground unless you understand fully what you're doing. I'm fairly experienced at this, and even I get the dumbass scared out of me from time to time. Bear hunting in Sweden. We hunt with a barking dog that usually makes the bear stay still so that the shot is easier. A good bear hunt is usually a quite mundane activity with a bear walking past a hidden hunter and dying within seconds of the shot. This time however I saw the dog moving in a strange star-shaped pattern. It was basically retreating from a point, 100 meters or so, and then back again. I heard it barking and when the dog named Ulf, an old jammed hunt with a long life of hunting experience, was running at 30 kilometers per hour something was obviously off. I start walking towards him to try to call him in and stop whatever madness was going on, when I experienced it. I see the thin but very tall birch trees in front of me moving like a scene from Jurassic Park. And I hear the sound of paws like drumming on the ground when it was running together with its breathing like Vogue, 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 Vogue. I took a stand behind a fallen tree and thought what the fuck am I doing with my life? Then comes Ulf, the dog, running for his life with a crazy here we go. Look. And behind Ulf comes the bear in full speed. Was it big etc? Yeah enough to take me at least. The bear stops when it sees me and we get eye contact at about 10 meters between us with me directing my hunt towards its head, I wanted it to die on the spot in case I would shoot. Then when both Ulf and the bear are standing still I hear a twig breaking somewhere else behind the bear. Two cubs come out of the shrubbery behind it. They are so cute and just look like they are having the blast of their lives. I kept aiming at the mama bear thinking don't make me do this. Until it left with its cubs. We cancelled the bear hunt in that area and it was the last time I hunted bear. I could have easily shot the mama bear by accident before seeing the cubs, thinking it was alone. I decided that I don't want to hunt with that possibility, so that was enough bear hunting for me. I still meet them from time to time, but under better circumstances various dig sites in the same area, containing human bones. This place was where I used to live, had a reputation for being haunted, I didn't believe it at first but certainly confirmed that later, and was where a murder was carried out years prior. They found all the bones bar left shin bone of one guy, but didn't find the other six deposits. Did I report it? Fuck no. Stumbling across a body is one thing, and calling it in is your best course of action. But bones, let alone piles of them in the same area? You're liable to get caught in the silencing sweep that will be the aftermath of a buried mob hit or something being resurfaced. How did I stumble upon them? I was basically Tarzan as a kid, running feral in the bush making shelters, contraptions, booby traps and shit. Went out on a run from my campsite to get some ochre, natural body slash rock art paint made from soil and often saliva, or another liquid agent to turn it into a muddy texture, started digging, and there they were. I was initially freaking out, started digging a little bit away from the hole for maybe half an hour and found another hole. I got some friends to come back with me the next day and we ended up finding the rest of the holes. I'm back now but I moved away from there for a while. Don't know if anybody found them, but I sure as hell made them easy to find. I am nowhere near an outdoorsman but we used to go camping once a year when I was a teen. One of the last times we went, me and my younger sister were sharing a tent while my mom, dad and brother shared the huge eight-person tent. I heard loud shuffling in my parents' tent and unzipping, followed by more shuffling no sounds going to or from the tent. So I called out a few times to make sure they were okay. No response, I started freaking out that it was a bear or something, and out of nowhere my sister who I didn't know was awake, 
says, I hear it too, go back to sleep and don't make any more noise. I was convinced I would wake up to a bloodbath, that the hills have eyes people came down from the mountain our campsite was butted up against and ate them. In the morning everything was normal, but neither me or my sister got any sleep, and when asking my parents WTH happened, my dad said he got up at around 4 am to use the facilities, but that he didn't hear me at all even though I was shouting and even then, unless my wristwatch was frozen, it was closer to 2 am when we heard the kerfuffle. And then my mom said he was sleepwalking and I've been convinced they were replaced by skin walkers ever since. I was putting myself through college one year by working at a sled dog kennel. The musher, the rest of our ragtag crew, and half of the dogs were in Alaska for the Iditarod for roughly two months. During that time I made the hour-long drive from my dorm room to the kennels to do all the daily dog kennel chores, feeding, poop scooping, bedding, etc. The kennels were outside of Sealy Lake, Montana, down a series of dirt roads, approximately 9 miles off the main road. Sometime, about halfway through this time frame a deer had been killed won one of the dirt roads out in the middle of nowhere. I assumed it had been hit by another vehicle but never fully investigated that. One night, as I was driving home, this very dead, very frozen deer, that I'd passed at least a couple dozen times at this point, started moving just as the lights from my headlights hit it. Not wanting to get any closer to the zombie deer I slammed on my brakes. I could feel my heart pounding through my chest. After what felt like forever, but was honestly probably only a few seconds, a bobcat comes crawling out of the stomach cavity of said deer. Phew. Not a zombie, Bigfoot, or aliens but definitely a surreal experience.